In this video, I'm going to talk to you about everything you need to know about movement in PAL World. I'm going to go over all the tips you need to know for player movement and PAL movement from level 1 to level 50 so you're never slower than you have to be ever again. If you find this video useful, consider subscribing. This is a new channel and I'd really appreciate all the support. Without further ado, let's get into the movement tips for the first stage of the game. Before I get into anything regarding movement with PALs, let's talk about all the options you have as a player first. I'll start by talking about sliding. Sliding downhill or down a ramp can gain huge momentum really quickly. As you're sliding, you'll gain a lot of speed, and if you jump during the slide, the speed will be carried over into that jump. If you use the combination like I'm doing in the background by sliding, then jumping, then going into a glide, your gliding will be a lot faster than it would have been if you were just gliding normally. And once you're in the air after jumping, you have two choices. Gliding will go, like I just said, a lot faster, but you could also go back down to the ground as you're holding C and you'll go right back into a slide without losing any of your speed. Now I'll get into some running tips. In the long run, literally, it will be better to fully sprint than to do constant rolls because you don't lose stamina as quickly and you can go a further distance in a shorter amount of time. Constantly sliding and immediately jumping only to go back into another slide is faster than regular running and consumes nearly no stamina. This uses the initial boost in speed you get from sliding and carries it over into a jump and then back into another slide. It's a bit of a min-max thing where it's really not worth it if you're just trying to run around your base. It'll save you maybe half a second and it's a lot more work to be pressing C and jump constantly, but it is something that's interesting to know. Also, one more tip I have is if you're starting a play through, make sure before you actually start playing the game to go around to all the spawn locations it gives you and get the teleport at each of those spots. When you're later in the game and you have stuff that can move around the map at a really high speed, it won't really matter as much, but right at the start, it's a really useful thing to do. And it's really easy too, because there's a teleporter at every spawn location and it's really close by, so it shouldn't take you too much time to do this entire process. Without further ado, let's get into the pals. From levels 1 to 10, there's not too many options, but here's the ones that you do get. At tier 7, you unlock the Milpaka saddle, and this is the first rideable mount that's faster than a human. That being said, it's really not super great, and I would just wait until you're level 9 to get the Dire Hell saddle. The reason I would wait is because leveling up from level 7 to level 9 takes almost no time at all, and Dire Hells are extremely easy to get anyway. The easiest way to get Dire Hell is to just come to this area of the map. They spawn really commonly, are very low level, and can be taken out when you're level 9, which is when you have the saddle for it anyway. Dire Hell is still incredibly limiting when it comes to vertical mobility, but that'll be fixed very soon. Because at level 15, you get Nightwing, which can be a really good vertical option as it's the first flyer you unlock in the entire game. You could also consider going to the Forgotten Islands on the map, which is in this area, to catch a Univolt for yourself. Univolt is still limiting in the vertical mobility department because it doesn't have a double jump, but he's much faster than Dire Hell, so it's probably worth your time to go get one. One thing I want to note about flyers really quickly is that flyers can go over over any body of water without any problems. I know early in the game you probably drowned once in a lake or something, but when you get a flyer it's completely trivial and you never have to worry about it again. Flyers actually regain stamina when they're on the water even if they're just coasting on it. You're never going to fall in like Ark or other games, you're going to be fine. Now I want to get into some other items you get throughout the game that are useful for mobility and explain why they're useful or things about them that you should know. First off, the feed bag. You get feed bags at a pretty low level and they're really good throughout the entire game to have because it's just a quality of life improvement. That being said, you should know that when your pal is out and you're riding it or he's doing work, he's not going to be consuming food from the feed bag so he can drop below half hunger. The other item I want to talk about is the grappling gun. The grappling gun has a few cool mechanics that I'm just going to cover really quickly in a list format and explain certain mechanics that are really useful about it. The grappling gun is actually really underrated inside the game and here's why. First off, if you recall earlier in the video when I talked about sliding gaining momentum, grappling also gives you this momentum and grappling into a glide or into a slide can be really effective when you're trying to gain speed. You can also use the grappling gun when you're over encumbered to move a lot faster instead of that really slow walk it makes you do. This is incredibly useful if you have a pal box near an area where you're farming and you just need to grapple back to it after you're already encumbered with all the metal or the coal you were farming for. One thing I would mention though is when you're grappling and you're encumbered, you cannot glide after the grapple. Gliding is not available to you when you're encumbered. Finally, I'll mention grapple chaining. A lot of people say online that it's really easy to grapple chain and it's really effective for speed, but I personally can't really get it to work. The concept is you have multiple grapples in your item slots and you just cycle between them after you use one because the cooldown is only a few seconds for each. Although this seems good in practice, it's pretty much impossible, at least for me to do it. It could be a skill issue for sure, but I just don't see it actually being effective and I haven't really found a use case for this. If you find one that's useful for you though, congratulations. One final note, grappling guns do not run out of durability at all. You can use it forever and it'll never break. The only other pal I'd consider getting for mobility purposes in the level 10 to 20 range would be Hang You or Hang You Christ, but I think Hang You is the only one you can get a saddle for at this point. Hang You is fantastic because he has a perk that no other glider in the game has. He gains elevation every time you use him. This can actually be used to go really high up if you have good stamina. 
My general recommendation for Hang You though, is if you're using them in a long range, whenever you start noticing yourself go super low in elevation, just press spacebar twice. It'll toggle the Hang You back out, you'll gain elevation back and you keep going. You will lose some horizontal speed, but if you're trying not to hit the floor, this is worth it. In regards to movement tips for level 20 to level 29, there's only three pals that I recommend actually pursuing, and there's nothing that changes about your player mobility, so that's all I have to cover. I'll start off with talking about Vanworm. Vanworm is a pretty average pal, but he's a bit better than Nightwing, and it's pretty easy to find here on the map. He does look intimidating, but if you find the Vanworms in this area of the map, He's super easy to take down, so you won't have too much of an issue of actually catching one and riding it for yourself. And when you ride him, you're going to notice that your stamina depletion decreases a lot. He's actually a little bit faster, and he can elevate in the vertical direction a lot faster than Nightwing can. On top of that, he's also a better fighter than Nightwing, so that's also a nice plus. Gilclaw is the next unlockable glider pal in the game after hanging you, and he's the one you're really going to want to go for for the long term. The reason you want to pursue Gilclaw long term as opposed to hanging you is that his horizontal acceleration off of gliding is significantly better. Horizontal acceleration might seem like a niche stat to be pulling out of the hat, but when you're using a glider, your main objective is to increase your speed around everyday tasks and to prevent fall damage. While Hangu's ability to gain vertical acceleration from starting a glide is nice, Gelclaw just has everything else you need for a glider and is a better choice for 95% of use cases. He spawns in these areas, and generally speaking, he's high teens, low 20s for level, so once you're level 23 and can actually use him, it'll be really easy to catch him. The final and best pal I'll mention in this section and in the entire video is Fengalope. Fangalope is the best mobility pal for the level you get him at in the entire game. He's also easily the best ground mobility mount in the entire game. Not only is Fangalope incredibly fast, he also comes with a Cloud Tempest ability which dashes him forward at a great speed, and he has a double jump which makes getting over cliffs much easier. Unlocking a saddle at level 26 might seem pretty late, but he's completely worth the wait. I didn't even mean to rhyme there. The easiest way to get Fangalope is to breed Direhal and Malpaca together, and both of these pals spawn where I mentioned Direhal spawning earlier in this video. For the record, I think it's absolutely worth breeding for good traits on this, so if you breed Direhals and Malpacas throughout your early game playthrough before you get to 26, so you have a Fangalope up ready with good traits i think that's very valuable now let's get into the pals that are from level 30 to 39 that are good for mobility in this section of the game there are zero ground or glider mounts that actually improve your movement capabilities at all one thing you get access to during level 30 is upgraded grappling guns and feed bags i think upgrading both of those isn't necessarily worth it but upgrading your grapple gun definitely is the thing is when you upgrade your grapple you get two incredibly useful perks the grapple has a longer range which is obviously useful and the cooldown is significantly less each level of grappling hook actually decreases it by two seconds, starting at 12 seconds for the common and ending up at six for the hyper. Now let's get into the level 30 pals. At level 37, you'll unlock the saddle for Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a fast flyer and is substantially better than anything from earlier in the game. His ability giving your attacks fire damage is also extremely useful in certain late game fights. Ragnarok spawn on the far side of the volcano primarily or at the top of the volcano, and he's really easy to fight once you actually find him. While he is an extremely good option, I prefer the other option the game gives you at this level of the game, especially if for movement. Phalaris is a pal you unlock the saddle for at level 38 and is a better version of Ragnarok in my opinion. Let me explain to you why I think Phalaris is a better choice. Phalaris has better stamina conservation, is faster, can go further distances in the air in one swoop, and is just cooler. He does have a bigger hitbox than Ragnarok, which can be annoying sometimes, but I don't think it's really a big trade-off, especially because he's better in most other categories. The easiest way to get Phalaris is to simply breed an Anubis with a Vanworm. This is another one like Fengalope, which I think it's really worth getting the trades on. Focusing on getting a switch or a runner or even both combined is really worth your time. It's not super worth going for that extra 10% if it's going to take you way longer, but getting a few traits is really helpful. Flares also spawns in the top right sanctuary, sanctuary three. So if you want to go catch him, you can do that, but I find it more worth it to breed throughout the game to get good traits for him. It's just easier to do that and it takes less of your time up. Let's get into the late game pals that are good for mobility. Frostalian is a legendary pal and is the first one I recommend going for when you're going through all four. Frostalian also has a saddle that unlocks at level 48 and is the fastest pal in the game except for Jetragon. They also come with a dash ability, being their move Crystal Wing. Frostalian's ice typing, plus its ability to turn your attacks into ice moves, is really helpful in fighting Jetragon, which is the fastest pal in the entire game. At level 50, you get Jetragon Saddle. While his stamina isn't the best while you're holding Sprint while flying, using him without even holding Sprint is still much faster than every other pal. He's so much faster than everything else in the game anyway that it doesn't really matter how you use him, just use him. Well, that's all the information I wanted to cover for this video. This AD was actually recommended to me by somebody in my Discord server, and I really liked it, so I did it. He helped me a lot when it came to making this video, so I really appreciate that. And if you'd like to recommend me something, either join my Discord and ask about it, or just leave a comment. Thank you all for watching. This has been Jace, and I'll see you guys next time.